Hello, and welcome to another edition of Some Arts from Somerville Media Center. And I'm thrilled to be talking about, like I do every year, uh, about Honk Festival. Um, it's the activist band street festival um, uh, dreamscape that <laughs> occurs every year in Somerville. Uh, there's a parade, there's performances, there's workshops. Uh, it, it's just wonderful. And this year it's, it's still happening in a, in a different version like we've become accustomed to uh, with the various music festivals and other public events that have stuck around but have gone virtual. Um, so Honk is Honk United um, and it will be happening around uh, Indigenous Persons Day, Indigenous Peoples Day this weekend as it does, uh, as it does every year. Um, and I'm joined with a, a, a few Honk super fans, participants, uh, honk lovers, um, and I will introduce them all, and uh, and then I want to hear from them. Um, so joining me is Annie Silverman. She is an artist and longtime Honk Festival housing host. Hello, Annie. Hello. And also joining me is Bonnie Hale, super supporter, fan, and volunteer. Hi. And Franny Oppenheimer, Franny Oppenheimer, excuse me, musician, recent high school grad, congratulations, who is joining us from UVM, who grew up with Honk and played with a few bands. Uh, hello, Franny. Hi. And lastly, Johnny Saylor, uh, who is a musician, uh, who's with the School of Honk and a volunteer. Hello, Johnny. Hello. So uh, I just I just gave uh, introductions to you all, but I, I want to hear from you about what it is that you love about Honk and why you keep coming back to Honk. Um, and why don't we uh, why don't we start off with Bonnie, the super fan? <laughs> um, I love the music first and foremost. Uh, the, the craziness of so many musicians being in one place all at the same time. Uh, I particularly love the bands from different countries and from all around the country. And I love that the musicians get to be amongst their brethren. <laughs> uh, a lot of them are the only type, the only brass band in their cities, their respective cities, and to see them all come together and, and enjoy watching each other is, is thrilling. And I love the people, the people just having so much fun watching and I'm one of them and it, the music makes me dance. I just dance, 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 dance. <laughs> And, uh, and Annie, uh, you, uh, you host musicians as well. Um, what, is, what is it about Honk that, that you keep coming back to? Well, I've, I've hosted musicians since um, Honk began. And um, I'm friends with John Bell and Trudy Cohen. And I um, am a community arts activist in like my a former life and an artist and, and Honk um, embodies for me a weekend of how I wish the world was, you know, and so I've opened up my home to musicians from Vancouver and Rome and Paris and Rio and um, and sometimes it's worked out really well and sometimes it's been a little edgy and dicey, but and it's just really a nice way to um, come into contact with people that you want to support their work, you know, and I, and the thing about Honk in Somerville that I love is that it's an all volunteer um, organization and um, that the people in restaurants like donate food. I've also like helped do a brunch on Sunday morning and I've gone and wrangled food and, you know, helped, you know, it's sort of like feeling, feeling a part of something and helping other people in the community, restaurateurs and, you know, feel like they're part of something. And so when you start looking at the, um, the parade starting in Davis Square and you know that the people at Mr. Crepe gave you fr fruit salad that morning, you know, and they're out there proudly watching, it's, you know, it's just a wonderful thing. Oh, that's great. And uh, Franny, um, you're a musician. Uh, and, and like I mentioned, you're involved in, and in, you've been involved in several bands uh, in various honks. Um, what is it that you love about honk? 
Um, so I kind of grew up with Honk. My dad joined uh, Second Line, which was the, I think, the founding band for Honk uh, when I was one. Oh, so, <laughs> I was, so I was like the little dancing toddler in the front. And then, I hope you had your earphones on. Yeah. Oh, no. I was completely, <laughs> completely exposed. Um, yeah. What? I, I loved it. I loved it. Um, and I would dance in the front. And then I, when I was, you know, probably like seven through 12, I would play tambourine next to my dad. And then I picked up trombone in school and started playing with Second Line. And then I joined School of Honk for a little while. And then there was a band that formed out of kids from my high school. Um, so I joined and let, co-led with a friend this past year, um, that band, which was great. So like a lot of a lot of the people from Second Line that my dad met when I was really little are still really close family friends. Mm -hmm. And I get to see them all at Honk. And I get to see people that I know from out of the country. I get to see people who have moved away and just come back for Honk. Um, and it's just like, it's, Honk can be a lot for someone to take in, I think, if you're not used to it. It's very loud, lots of bright colors, lots of, um, you know, noteworthy people in noteworthy clothing. Um, and, but for me, it just sort of feels like home and I can sort of enjoy like the joy that everybody brings to it. It's not overwhelming. It's, it's, it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> That's such a great answer. Thank you. Um, and Johnny, you're a musician as, as well. Um, and you know, what is it, what is it that you love about honk? Well, I've been involved in music for a long time, but not the honk thing in particular. So I went to the festival for many years before I ever played in it. Um, as other members have said, there's a lot of great music and it's all for free. You just kind of walk around Davis Square and freaky people and all kinds of interesting things to occupy yourself. So I love the festival. Then um, I worked at Brandeis and a, a fellow co-worker was going to the early school of honk. And he said, you, you know, this thing is pretty amazing, you know, way back. And so I joined in. I'd never been a drummer. And so I became a drummer because I wasn't a, a horn player or uh, anything like that. And, um, you know, playing with the School of Honk also, most people probably know, but it's a huge band. Uh, it used to be anyway, whatever, 100 plus people. So playing with 100 plus brass musicians is like nothing else, really. So anyway, <laughs> um so I, I feel lucky to be around School of Honk and to have got in when I did. But um, as others have said, just the honk is just, you know, if you love music um, and, you know, the people that love music as well, I'm sure there will be something good for you to see at the festival. Uh, That's great. And uh, I think I think it was um, Annie who had said that it's it's uh, or maybe it was Bonnie. I apologize uh, that it's it's a weekend um, that you just you're living in the world in the way that you wish it was. <laughs> and um, that's, that's a great way of putting it. Um, and I wonder, does anybody out there want to share a, a particular story around a, a certain honk that stands out that kind of embodies um, what it is that, that that means? Well, I remember the year, um, I think it was 2005. It was the year when, um, the Italian economy was doing really badly and Alitalia had these super cheap tickets from um, Rome to Boston. And this, um, this music collective, Tito Banda, which had 35 people came to honk. And then there was another band from Rome called the Pink Puffers. And I, I housed six people at my house and some of the people didn't speak English and um, somebody uh, one of the guys who was a drummer uh, broke a somebody broke a light in my house, and we had to go to, we had to go to Tags Hardware to fix it. So I but I made I made somebody from the band who spoke English who was an architect. So everybody, it was pretty incredible. They they used their um, their you know money that they'd get for playing on the street. They pooled it for a year, and people who had more professional jobs that had you know had a better income, they would you know, put in more money, but everybody had to have like 200 euros to come. And so, so everybody came. And so I, I dragged an architect that was in the band with the drummer who turned out to be an electrician. And we went to Tags Hardware to get pieces to fix this light. And then they ran into somebody from Italy. And so 
Um, so it's fixed. So every time I have to turn that light on, I, I think about I think about those guys. But it was just it was just so wonderful to have these people from different countries and really like really really good musicians and um, and uh, and and just the you know they were just so happy to be here and happy to be in people's homes. I mean, just you know, also because people from other countries, their ideas of America are from movies or from you know, like I feel like I feel like at this point in time, um, you know, we're cultural representatives of the other America. And so I feel, you know, happy to have those connections with people. Mm, that's wonderful. And, uh, and Bonnie, you, we were talking a little bit beforehand um, and you have, you have one of the best views of the parade because you're, you're in it, <laughs> um, you know, kind of uh, yeah. as a, as a, a bucket in, in the bucket brigade. Um, can you, can you let us know what that's like and, and some things that you've seen and heard? Uh, well, it's just so much fun to, you know, have an official part in, in the festival by being a bucket passer. And, um, what I want most is to be in front of the band dancing. That that's what I do. So, I kind of get to, because of my seniority, I get to pick which bands do I want to pass the bucket for. <laughs> don't, don't tell everybody. <laughs> um, so I get to be right down in front and dance. And then between songs, I dance amongst the crowd. And, you know, it's like, I love everybody. They love me. Uh, they give me lots of money and I give them buttons and the little kids, they're so excited. I ask their parents, is it okay to give them a button? And, you know, they pin on the buttons and uh, it's just thrilling. And the other thing I wanted to say was um, when Annie was talking about people who don't speak English, uh, it's so true that music is the international language. Everybody just the music is just so great. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you you can't even speak to each other, but you can look at each other and feel the energy and they're playing and I'm dancing. And uh, like someone else said, it's like a dreamscape. It's like a beautiful world. Yes, wouldn't it be great if it was like this all the time? <laughs> <laughs> and I like making money for honk. You know, I feel very proud when my bucket is overflowing and I go to turn it in to the, uh, to the, you know, the organizers. <laughs> That's great. And um, uh, Franny, like uh, what you've been involved in some, in various bands and, and what have your, what's been your experience uh, in, in each of those? Uh, do you have any um, stories to share about, uh, being being right there as a musician um, in that very excitable environment uh, where where everybody around you is is in this um, dream. <laughs> yeah, um, there's a kind of pride that comes with being in the band. I think so. I would always I would be super proud to like stand next to my dad and everybody's watching me and the band, um, and it it just feels great. And then. That was more what it was like when I was younger. It was just so exciting and I felt so important. And now playing as like a, a normal aged member of a band uh, instead of just the one kid among adults, um, it's, it feels great to be so cohesive in front of people. Like we can all play off each other. We can make something beautiful together. And the crowd like hyping you up just makes it more fun. You can sort of let go you can solo, it feels, it seems really scary to solo in front of people, but once you're doing it and everybody's so excited, it feels really good. Um, and it, it just feels great. Everyone is so happy. There's like a rush that comes after you play. It sounds so cheesy, but it's true. <laughs> that like there is a rush after you play and you finish with your set and it's, it's great. It's so exciting. And I, it is completely true what Annie and Bonnie have said that like, you can harmonize with someone that you can't talk to. So like my band was warming up last honk and we played Stand By Me and a band from Germany came over and started playing with us and harmonizing. And it was like, it, it was, it felt kind of magical. Um, 
I think that's one of my favorite parts. Oh, that's, that's so great. And um, Johnny, same question. Uh, how's it feel to be uh, in and around Honk on yeah. Honk Week? It, it is like a dream, like people have said. Also, because there's, there's things for the musicians. Uh, after we play, we all go somewhere and eat, and then people all play. It's, you know, so that, that could be fun, too. But uh, there's many sides. I mean, an interesting memory I have is one parade that we did with the School of Hong from Davis Square to uh, Harvard Square. When it was rain, it was miserable. It was just like a October cold, bone-soaking rain, you know. And I, I recall hearing one of the bands from Texas. The drummer was like, man, in Texas, we would just call it off today. We wouldn't even go out, you know. But... Um, and it was miserable, really. The whole, my, my coat was like a wet towel that just kept hitting me with this cold. So, but you know, it was still amazing. And I, you know, we, I remember it today. I mean, it wasn't so fun at the time, but to just kind of, you know, to have the spirit to just, you know, and whatever, fall, cold, fall, rain. We know what that's like in New England. It's like, you just want to go inside and get a blanket or something. But no, you're marching down Mass Ave with hundreds of people, all of you soaked to the skin. So um, that's, that, that's kind of a negative, but still ended up being a positive. And I didn't actually get a cold or anything afterwards. So that was also a good part of it. Oh, well, that, that's good. <laughs> and ra rain or shine the the show has to go on the show goes on exactly yeah. yeah i mean i guess pandemic the show does not go on well whatever it goes on in a modified form is, is what happens but, yeah 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 and that that's actually a really good segue into um talking about this year's honk um is anybody involved in um in uh, doing a recording or that knows of, of people that are that are uh, recording for this year's Honk United. Johnny, I see you raise your hand. Yeah, I, I know. I mean, I, like School of Honk will still do something. At this point, it's uncertain of what we'll do, um, but uh, there will be something there. And another brass band I'm in will do some streaming too. I think what they're gonna do is have a big streaming. Uh, There's gonna be a lot of video stuff uh, anyway. The things in Honk usually are not settled until shortly before the opening <laughs> bell. So it's not anything unusual. But um, I think people from all over the world, you know, there are Honk Fests all over the world, kind of after, you know, it started here, I think, basically. But Yeah, and that's amazing. Um, that's one of the things I was thinking about is that um, it's a phenomenon that people made up. It didn't exist before you know, the second line band said, oh, you know, we, we play at demonstrations and we play and it's really fun and let's, let's see if anybody else does that. And so the first year, I think there were 12 bands and then there were more bands and then some people would just like hear about Honk and they wouldn't really even know what it was. Um, but then they'd think, God, this is really cool. And I played clarinet in high school and I have a clarinet in my, in my um, closet and I'm going to, I want to be in a band, you know, and there've been kids. I mean, there was this amazing band from Santa Rosa, California, that they, that they were all really young and they busked and they heard about Honk and they came um, just because they, just because they thought it was like the, the most amazing thing they ever heard of and they wanted to be part of it. You know, so I, I'm very, um, I'm very happy that it exists. I'm, you know, really, sad about the pandemic, but I, you know, look forward to other years where, you know, there's going to be music in the streets and, um, and Mayor Joe, you know, said he really likes being the mayor of the, of the city where, um, you know, you have like guys wearing tutus with trombones and how cool is that, you know, so, so it's good. And is anybody else uh, participating in Honk United this year or, um, Franny, I, you mentioned that you're not, you're not, but uh, you know of some some people that are beginning to organize. Yeah, so my band, my, I guess I'm not really in it anymore. The band I led last year um, will be participating. I think they'll probably send in a video or stream. Um, it's being led by a current senior this year. It's always led by, a, it was started two years ago, but since then it's always been led by a senior. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of, I'm not happy that it's online, but I'm kind of glad that I'll be able to watch it from Vermont because otherwise I wouldn't be able to see it. What's um, the band's name? Oh, Bandland Brass Band. 
Okay, thank you. Also to just follow up on that, you know, there was so much about a serendipitous about the festival where you would just be on the streets, people have said many times, seeing someone or hearing a new band or, you know, there were also oftentimes political actions that took place during the Hong Fest. So you would get to meet with other activists, musician activists, all of that kind of, you know, face to face. And, and of course, people playing music together. It's just people kind of, and outside is better, of course, but anyway. It's uh, you know, whatever. It'll, it'll, it'll be what it'll be. But I think you know, there's. It's just great to be in Davis Square with a whole bunch of crazy people. I will say that. <laughs> well, I know tonight I have a friend that plays clarinet in School of Honk, and she has a big yard, and she measured her yard out with cones, and so there's going to be ten or twelve people that are practicing tonight. Um, right. And there's ten ten feet apart for each of them, so one of the sections of you know, it's the read section of School of Honk will be practicing. So, so that's great, huh? That is, that is great. And I, I, I hope that means that between now and um, Honk United that we'll be able to hear different bands practicing mm -hmm. from various parts of the city. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I hope so, yeah. We, we, we play at Porterhouse Square from time to time. So, you know, oh, nice. you may hear us there. Very nice. Um, and uh, so what I'm hearing from everybody is, is the, the sense of community um, and uh, that, that transcends, you know, uh, boundaries and countries and uh, the shared love of music, the shared uh, sense of activism, you know, just bringing together people in, in Somerville. And uh, it happens every year. And that's, um, that's I think, what it, the, part of the appeal, if, if, I'm, if I'm hearing correctly, to all of you. Um, and so just to, to talk about the sense of community anymore, have there, have there, can you talk a little bit about the, um, the relationships that formed from, from Honk, either activist relationships or relationships among musicians? You know, it could be sharing, um, uh, sharing music. Maybe you're, you're still emailing people from Honk's uh, 10 years ago. Um, does anybody have anything um, to talk about the, the relationships that form from Honk? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I well, mean, you would see people at the festival right. that, that, you know, each year you would see them there. So that was one way that a lot of that stuff happened, you know. Yep. And a School of Honk. School of Honk, which evolved from Honkfest, uh, they played and paraded every single Sunday. So it was like honk fests all year long. Uh, and it was professional musicians and amateur musicians. Um, and it was just such a great thing that they would just, just parade around and they people would say, what is this? And we'd say, oh, it's School of Honk. And they would announce, School of Honk, every Sunday, anybody can join. You need an instrument, we'll loan you an instrument. And it just burgeoned into this huge thing, like Johnny said, that sometimes there's like a hundred people marching down College Ave and cars are, people looking at a car stupefied. Uh, so I just think it's so cool that Honk Fest originated in Somerville and School of Honk evolved out of Honkfest and lets us sort of continue that all year long. Mm. Yeah, School of Honk, you should do a show on School of Honk actually. <laughs> That's another, I mean, it's similar to the Honkfest, but it's, you know, a hundred people every week and like every cold, we'd go out, you know, it was a, so th th there's a lot of interesting also stories about music community. Same, same. I mean, as, as, as Bonnie said, you know, it, it all comes out of the same. Many of the people who started, I think most of them came out of Second Line, actually, and then started School of Honk and then the Honk Fest also. But yeah, as far as community, though, community music, culture, all of that stuff, School of Honk was a great incubator for all of that stuff. And uh, Annie, you still, you, do you still keep in touch with uh, the people that you've housed? Some of the people, I mean, mostly the people from, there's a couple people from Italy that I'm still in touch with. Um, but when you were talking, one of the things that I really love in the Honk Festival is um, traditionally Friday night, they have this lantern parade. And so that's really, a, I feel like it's really a community event that there's a, a park where 
kids can make lanterns, um, you know, in, in soda bottles with LEDs and tissue paper. And then, and then it gets dark. And then you're in this field with all these people. And there's probably about six or seven bands that come and they lead these little family parades around the neighborhood. So there'll be tiny little kids and you're just walking up and down streets and people come and sit on their porches and dance in the street. And it's short, it's about 40 minutes, but it's really lovely. I mean, it's like a festival of lights and um, people have, now that LED technology is really, you know, blossoming, people have, you know, their trombones will be festooned with like blue lights and there'll be just all of these things that are gorgeous and, and kids are doing, you know, it's, it's just very participatory and then, um, and sweet, you know, so I like that a lot. Oh, that's great. And uh, Franny, the, um, did, how much did Honk inform your own love of music? So Honk is kind of, the, the music I listen to on my own is very different from the music that's played at Honk, but it has kind of the same idea. Um, it's like, I love music that's very joyful or music that's super angry. I listen to a lot of punk music, very angry, very activist. Um, so I think that definitely came from that and from probably from my dad, who was my gateway into Honk. Um, and I was, I was just thinking like a lot of the relationships, a lot of like very close family friends that I have, that my family has, are through Honk. Um, so a lot of like the adults that I've known throughout my life have been people that we know through Honk. When I turned 18 in quarantine, so I couldn't see anyone. <laughs> and my parents, yeah. But um, my parents sent out an email to a lot of like my friends and family friends asking for like a video. And then they stitched all the videos together, which was really, really nice. And it struck me like how many of the people in the video were people that I know from Honk. That's great. Um, and it was like, yeah, I don't know. It, it's a very comfortable place for me and it, it feels very homey. Yeah, that's so great. That's such a great story. <laughs> it sounds like Honk is uh, like a family, an extended family reunion for you every year. <laughs> Um, so as as we as we uh, wrap up, um, do you, does anybody have any any parting words, any any wishes for Honk this year, um, any anything that they hope for Honk next year, uh, or just anything touch on anything else that we haven't talked about uh, regarding Honk? And I'll just I'll throw that out to anybody. Come mm. see it, tune in. <laughs> it's a really cool thing to watch or come to when it's back in person. Hopefully 2021, we'll see. Yeah. Vote. Vote. I feel that it's really um, totally an intergenerational experience, you know, so Franny and diapers and then, you know, growing up in Honk and I, you know, I have a friend whose little boy would you know, he would be four and, and he, he, there was a second line song that was his favorite song. And when Honk was over, he would weep. And now he's in the school of Honk with his mother, you know? So it's sort of like, there's this way that you can be, you know, and you, you can be any age and really get Honk and participate. And, you know, and it's so much better to be able to like do something rather than, you know, just sit and watch television. So I just think it's a wonderful thing. Perfect, perfect sentiment to wrap this up, I think. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want, I want to thank all of you for, for joining me. Um, this has been really great. And it actually has made me feel a sense of honk. <laughs> <laughs> that was excellent. So I want to thank again, uh, Bonnie Hale, super supporter fan and honk volunteer. Uh, Annie Silverman, artist, longtime honk volunteer housing host. Uh, Johnny Saylor, musician and uh, with, who's with the School of Honk and a volunteer, and Franny Oppenheimer, who uh, is a musician, uh, high school grad, a UVM student, uh, and all around uh, wonderful person from what, I'm, from what I'm seeing on this long list here. <laughs> um, so thank you all for joining me, and I invite the audience to, to seek out Honk United uh, around Indigenous Persons Day. Uh, in Somerville, and uh, uh, hopefully the spirit of honk comes through uh, whatever programming that uh, that people put together from around the world. Thanks, Dave. thank you.